up? My name is Elbrin. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today, we're reacting to some more SCP material. But today, we're reacting to someone I haven't watched in quite a while. We're reacting to Dr. Bob. If you don't know who Dr. Bob is, he's, an, he's another uh, SCP animator who uh, goes into SCPs in particular on the internet, does them one by one, creates a little story, goes into the explanation, and such, so forth. And I haven't, can't really remember off the top of my head, knowing the last time I actually watched a uh, Dr. Bob video. But it was around the time I stopped reacting to SCP content in general. But today we're going to change that because some uh, videos that he's made had, have come out and I wanted to react to them. So today we're going to get right into that. And this is SCP-1575 Body Horror Statue. And if anything the name suggests, it's probably going to be just that. So we're going to get right into this in 3, 2, 1, boom. A perfect shot. The photographer holds up his camera, focusing on the deer. Then, the creature turns and stares down the photographer with the face of a Whoa. human man. A long, elegant neck ending in a mutated abomination. Okay, not what I was expecting. The photographer drops the camera and runs away, screaming. He won't be coming back to get it. He'd rather just buy a new one. A woman is walking her dog along the dirt road she's walked going down straight into day it this for time. several years. It winds alongside a dense forest and past several large plots of land. Some are occupied by farms, some have been left abandoned. It's a pleasant walk, one she can always count on to be as quiet and peaceful Sorry, as phone. it is stimulating for her dog, with plenty to look at and smell. Occasionally he gets distracted by a wild animal, but the odd squirrel or possum is nothing the dog hasn't seen before, and she can quickly get him back on the path with a whistle and a tug of his leash. As the two of them near a familiar bend toward the halfway point of the walk, she can't help but notice that something seems off about the dog's behavior today. His steps are anxious, and his hackles are up. He keeps sniffing the air, tugging at the leash, whining insistently, as if trying to tell her something. She soothes the dog, promising him that there's nothing over there. The area he keeps staring at, a low growl rumbling in his chest, is an abandoned farm. No one's been over there for years, but no matter what she does, he keeps staring at that abandoned farm in the distance. I mean, dogs know best. Actually, just animals in general know best when they feel like they're in danger. They get sense things better than humans could ever. The only time we feel it is when we actually see something out of place or we have that small sensation in the back of the head that we're being watched. And considering my case, my back door is always open. <laughs> so... Yeah, animals are better than we do. Suddenly, there's a rustling sound, some sort of unseen animal moving through the bushes toward the farm. The noise sets the dog off, and he jolts in its direction, yanking so hard and so abruptly on the leash that it flies out of his owner's hand. Free to pursue whatever had been aggravating him so much, the dog tears off toward the abandoned farm. The woman chases after him, desperate to catch her beloved pet before he gets himself attacked by a wild animal, or worse. She sprints after the dog for half a mile until they've passed the ruins of an old barn and reached a horse paddock that seems to be in surprisingly good condition. As the woman catches her breath, she spots a sign she'd never noticed before on the road. It reads, The Miracle Farm. The paint is unchipped, vivid, even fresh. This doesn't look abandoned. Her dog barks sharply and she follows the sound. There he is, crouched low to the ground, shaking and barking at a pair of horses. Wait. No, those aren't horses. They have the hooves, the haunches, the tails, but their upper bodies are all human torso, arms, head, and face. It shouldn't be possible. But her dog uh, what is are barking they called? at what appears to be a pair of centaurs. That's she grabs about, hold of his you. leash, urging him back from the strange beasts. As she backs away, she hears a sound behind her, like a person imitating the crow of a rooster. She spins around and sees a wide-eyed man with a bright red wattle on his face, feathers jutting out of his neck, he crows again, then stoops to peck at the ground. Just behind the rooster man, she sees even more impossible human-animal hybrids. Rotund, pink-fleshed children with pig noses roll in a puddle of mud. A woman coiled up on a rock stares straight ahead, forked tongue flitting in and out of her mouth as she hisses. This place is abandoned after all. There is still a farm here, but it's no ordinary farm. The woman scoops her dog, her completely ordinary non-human dog, into her arms and sprints back toward the dirt road. She keeps going, running all the way home until she can get to a phone and immediately calls the authorities. 
The first few people she speaks to laugh at her, accusing her of making a prank call. But one man takes her seriously and records her report. Who is probably an SCP then agent. Then he passes it on to his friends at yep. the SCP Foundation. <laughs> Dude, that was coming. raid of the Miracle Farm and find that it is just as bizarre as the woman described. They uncover files in their office detailing that the property once belonged to Marshall, Carter, and Dark Limited, before its ownership passed to a private company that specializes in the finest in custom-ordered pets, prey, and companions. Mobile Task Force Theta-2, Moreau's morgue, is deployed to the scene. Aside from the from uh, talking about the SCP, can we talk about his animation quality and how much it's increased over the years? I remember when his videos first started coming out on the internet, and that was around the time I started getting into the SCP uh, universe. And I, so I remember how his videos first started out. I mean, the, everything else was good, but the quality and animation itself has improved over the years. Just want to talk about that real quick. Where they bring all on-hand personnel, clients, and living specimens into custody. Personnel and clients are questioned, then given Class A amnestics and released. The specimens are contained for further study, and the facility is destroyed. But not before the MTF discovers a curious marble statue acting as a fountainhead, providing all drinking water for the animal-human hybrids on site. The statue, depicting the Roman goddess Venus, allows water to flow out of its mouth yes. when pumped in through the base. Somehow, water flowing through it is causing ordinary animals to transform into these bizarre creations. But how? Before we tell you, first... Okay, this is literally the second time in the last couple days since I started re -re uh, watching SCP videos again that this same exact ad, Better Help, has been included in these videos. I know what it is. But I'm not here for the ads. I'm here for the reactions. If you guys want to see them yourselves, link is in the description to the video. Check it out yourself. Anyway, let's get back into it. Help for supporting this channel. And now back to the strange marble statue. The fountain is quickly removed from the area and brought to the foundation for further study. And that is the story of how the SCP Foundation got its hands on SCP-1575. It's the statue itself, As not is the actual animals. The case at the SCP Foundation, They're just, the uh, research subsidies. team quickly began conducting controlled experiments using SCP-1575. They exposed a variety of animal test subjects to water that had passed through the fountainhead. I combed through the test logs I was able to access and have compiled some of the most relevant examples of the anomaly's effects on various subjects. I must warn you that some of the imagery contained within may be a bit disturbing, even by SCP Foundation standards. I admit that a few of them turned my significantly desensitized stomach, but still, they fascinate me. And like a train wreck in slow motion, I haven't been able to look away. And that's your warning to you guys too, so you guys want to, want to see, click off right now. <laughs> Test 1575-2 was performed on a female Japanese field mouse, Apodemus argentius, at the adolescent stage of development. After several weeks of exposure to SCP-1575-1, the mouse began to rapidly increase in size. Over the course of 12 days, the mouse grew to a height of 1.01 meters, a 500% increase in overall body size. As the mouse began to grow, her fur falling out and being replaced with smooth, human skin, her face warping into that of a young human woman, her appetite increased drastically. She was provided a standard field mouse diet of fruits, berries, and nuts, and consumed nearly 95% of her body weight at a given time in this provided food. By the twelfth day of her mutation, the mouse's heart was unable to support her rapidly growing body, and it gave out. She died due to failure of her cardiovascular system, leaving behind an eerie half-mouse, half-human creature with a vestigial tail, partially Jeez. transformed paws, and gray-tinged skin where her fur had once been. Test 1575-4's subject was a pre-adolescent male white-tailed deer, Otocoileus virginianus. The deer began to mutate fairly quickly following exposure to the water, and its initial steps were an alarming sight, to say the least. He began to suffer severe hemorrhaging in the pelvic area as his reproductive organs atrophied. By the end of the mutation cycle, they had disappeared entirely, leaving a smooth, fleshy surface behind. Several male researchers in attendance had to leave the room during the initial bleeding, and one asked to be referred to an on-site counselor regarding a persistent, recurring nightmare inspired by the mutation. The deer's arms and legs changed into human arms and legs, hooves into hands and feet, by the end of the process, which stabilized after 30 days, 
the deer had become an androgynous-looking eastern seaboard Native American person. The only oh. remaining indicators that this had once been something other than human were a tail and antler nubs resembling those characteristic of yearling bucks. After testing the anomaly the on prey animals, the, the researchers decided to explore its effects on a predator. The subject of test 1575-6 oh was an adult female Bengal tiger, oh, Panthera tigris no. tigris. Naturally, there were concerns about the safety of researchers given the subject's aggressive nature. To prevent any accidental injury or death, she was kept sedated for the duration of any hands-on examination. Unfortunately, the application of these sedatives had a negative impact on the tiger's health during the mutation process. After four days, before any dramatic visible transformation had even taken place, the tiger experienced failure of the heart, liver, and kidneys. Though this experiment oh. was largely regarded as a failure, it provided the team with a vital piece of information. Sedatives should not be used on test subjects until they were further along in their transformation and at least 80% stabilized. After the tiger, the research team pivoted to the least threatening version of a similar animal, an adolescent female domestic cat, Felis Oh catus. no, not the cat! The transformation occurred without incident over the course of 30 days. It was described as unsettling to watch, especially coupled with the pained yowls of the subject, which slowly transformed into the screams of a young woman. But the subject survived the process. Her body stretched and contorted, claws turned to long, pointed fingernails, whiskers fell out, and fur was completely shed. By the time her transformation was complete, there was a young woman in the containment chamber, crawling around on all fours and batting at particles of dust. She retained her tail, the aforementioned pointed nails, and eyes with the same vertical slit pupils she had as a feline. She spoke several times, but only to request additional food. After testing on a cat, the next natural step was to test the anomaly. Okay, that one actually ended better than I was actually expecting, because I am a cat person. <laughs> and she's actually not over there, surprisingly. Usually when I record these videos, it's always a cat off to the screen over there on my bed. But today she's not there, which is actually quite surprising. Only on a dog. For test 1575-9, the subject was an adult female domestic canine, Canis lupus familiaris, of mixed breed. At this point in time, it was believed that the fountainhead had no anomalous effect on invertebrates. Unfortunately, this experiment proved otherwise, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The dog was exposed to the anomalous water, and dramatic signs of mutation soon began to show. First, the dog began shedding all of its fur. At this point, the researchers got an unfortunate look at something that had been hiding in the dog's coat, an infestation of fleas, uh -oh. which were beginning to transform as well. Uh oh. The fleas had quadrupled in size and were continuing to grow. Even more horrifying, Ugh. their legs had changed into appendages resembling human fingers, and their features rearranged into a nightmarish facsimile of a human face, blood pouring from their open mouths. Unfortunately for the test subject and any researchers present, the fleas were not the only parasite that had infested this dog. On the sixth day of the experiment, the slowly mutating dog collapsed on her side, breathing heavily, exhibiting intense discomfort. Her abdomen began to distend, and nearby researchers could see something wriggling just beneath the skin. The motion became more violent, and the abdomen distended further and further, as if the dog was progressing through the stages of pregnancy at an advanced this. rate. One of the researchers made an anxious comment about being reminded of a particular scene from the movie Alien and was admonished for it. But he was quickly proven right, because with a sudden burst, a tapeworm with the face of a man erupted through the skin, screaming at the top of its lungs, eyes rolling wildly in its sockets. One researcher vomited, another fainted. The experiment was swiftly aborted, and testing procedures were updated to include a specification yeah, that all blurred. subjects must be examined for parasites prior um, to any exposure to SCP-1575. None of the mutated creatures survived this test. The dog test was a colossal failure on many counts, but it inspired the research team to continue testing on non-mammals, not invertebrates, no one wanted to go down that road again, but Ugh. other animals at least. For test 1575-12, the subject was a pre-adolescent female hyacinth macaw, Anadorhynchus hyacinthinus. The parrot swiftly began to change, and the sound of agonized paws filled the room, along with a sickening snapping sound. After a moment, the sound was identified 
as breaking bones. The rest of the bird's body, particularly the muscles and organs, were transforming at a faster pace than the skeleton. The body contorted painfully, and the wings began to split, forming into rudimentary fingers and hands. But the transformation never finished, never stabilized. After 20 days, the macaw was dead, and the cause of death was determined to be internal injuries due to these extensive bone fractures. The subject of test 1575-13 was an adult female leopard gecko, Eublepharus macularius. The transformation occurred at an accelerated rate, and within one week, the lizard had grown to a height of approximately four feet and displayed many human characteristics, including human legs and feet, a face, and a full head of hair. The hands remained unchanged, though they were larger, and the specimen was still capable of climbing up walls, much like an ordinary gecko. At the 10-day mark, the subject experienced catastrophic organ failure as a result of the mutation and expired. One more test on an invertebrate was conducted, this time deliberately. For test 1575-14, the subject was a female common green grasshopper, Homocestus viridulus. As the mutation began, the grasshopper began to shed its exoskeleton in a process best described as flesh forcing its way out of a casing, breaking the exoskeleton into pieces. What was left following this shedding process was a creature resembling the same grasshopper, but three times larger and covered in human skin. Oh! It continued to grow, but no further human features seemed to develop. After 15 days, it expired. An autopsy revealed the development of human organs inside, including a heart, lungs, kidneys, and liver. The cause of death could not be determined, but the transformation process is thought to have made the subject incompatible with life. The subject of test 1575-15. Okay, that one was actually the most curious one out of them all, because that one didn't even turn into an actual human on the outside. It just had human flesh, and that's it. Well, aside from the internal circular system, but that's just about it. That one was actually tamed, I should say. Teen was an adult female grizzly bear, Ursus arctos horribilis. During the first 29 days of her mutation, the bear did not consume any food or drink aside from SCP-1575-1. Still, she did not appear to experience any hunger or discomfort aside from the pain of the transformation itself. Her body slowly shrank over the course of 30 days, her fur thinning until it left only the ordinary amount of body hair for an average human woman. Notably, the hair was the same color as the fur she had once had. She retained her bear paws, which appeared to be uncomfortably heavy at the ends of her new human arms. Throughout the transformation, stool samples taken from the subject showed excessive amounts of organic matter, such as blood and fatty deposits. After 32 days, the mutation was complete, and the former bear's condition was stable. She did not speak. Instead, she used her newly transformed mouth and voice to grunt and roar. It was much less intimidating coming out of her human mouth, but researchers noted that her paws and claws were still dangerous and should be avoided. The subject of test 1575-16 was an adolescent female Gravy's zebra, also imperial zebra, Equus grevii. Over the course of 27 days, the zebra's main body, hind legs, and most of her head mutated into a human, resembling the appearance of a person native to Africa. However, her front legs and jaw structure remained that of a zebra. The transformation stabilized, leaving her in this half-changed state. She was unable to move without pain unable to eat, and exhibited extreme distress at her state of existence. When she attempted to walk, she would lose her balance and topple over, lying on the ground in agony. It is uncertain what caused the transformation to halt at such an incomplete stage, but the subject's quality of life had been all but destroyed. After a thorough physical examination, the half-transformed zebra specimen was euthanized as a humane measure. As That's disturbing surprising. as the results of the Foundation's test using SCP-1575 were, they allowed for a more thorough understanding of the anomaly and how it operates. The statue, which was studied extensively, shows no anomalous properties on its own, nor do any samples taken of the marble throw up any red flags. It appeared to be a completely ordinary statue, except for the effect that it has on any water that flows through it. This water, or SCP-1575-1, begins to show its anomalous true colors when consumed by a non-human mammal. Non-human mammals who consume 0.5 or more liters of this water per day will begin to mutate over the course of a month. Perplexingly, impossibly, they will mutate into a human being. 
During the experiments, it was noted that the ethnicity of the resulting human seems to correspond with the humans native to the natural habitat of the pre-transformation mammal. A European deer displays Caucasian features, for example, while a North American deer resembles a Native American. Domestic dogs and cats have ethnically ambiguous features or appear mixed race, likely due to the mixed backgrounds of their species. Makes Many sense. of the survivors of this process develop vocal cords and are able to speak about their experiences, but their odds of surviving are not great. Female specimens have about a 25% fatality rate. Males have a staggering fatality rate of about 95%. Wow. There is a 40% chance that the transformed animal, regardless of sex, will keep at least one premutation feature. These include, but are not limited to, paws, tails, ears, and fur. Across the board, those who survive the mutation process describe it as extremely painful. Though these transformed animals can communicate, they tend to display an intelligence level that aligns with their prior species. There are a few exceptions to this, as some subjects have displayed heightened problem-solving skills, but it is uncertain what exactly caused this shift. Proposed causes include neural restructuring during mutation or an unintended byproduct of the foundation testing itself. These transformed instances do not magically become human in behavior, personality, or habits. They retain their animal instincts, memories, and sense of self, give or take some added depression or anxiety brought on by the traumatic and drastic changes they've endured. Humans exposed to this anomalous water do not seem to change at all, which makes a degree of sense. If the water serves to make transform sense. mammals into human beings, then a human drinking it has nothing for the water to change. Still, I wouldn't suggest drinking it. Tap water may not taste great, but it's far less likely to mutate you. SCP-1575 is currently held in a 6 meter safe? by 6 meter by 4 meter Entity. containment chamber at Biosite 23, with direct access to Research Laboratory 3 at the same site. Unless it is actively in use for an approved test, no water may be allowed into SCP-1575's containment. After testing has concluded, all water used during the test is to be held in quarantine and may only be used for further tests. At the time of my reading, I discovered one addendum added to the file for SCP-1575 by a doctor assigned to the anomaly. It reads, Following the incident on the 12th of this month, during test 1575-9, any animal to be used in testing with SCP-1575 is to be thoroughly examined for both external and internal parasites. Our initial beliefs that SCP-1575-1 only affected the primary host has proven wrong. It apparently retains its mutagenic properties, even when ingested secondarily through the host's lower GI tract or bloodstream. We absolutely do not need another instance of half-mutated flea creatures, and the psychologist is having a hard time helping Janet with her nightmares of a seven-foot-long tapeworm with a screaming face tearing out of the belly of a dog. I fear that Janet and I may have those nightmares in common. This imagery will stay with me for quite some time. Yeah. When it comes to drinking water from mysterious fountains, proceed with caution, my friends. Sure, this particular fountainhead may not trigger mutation in humans, but that doesn't mean it's the only one of its kind out there. Drink from the wrong water spout, and you may find yourself changed, and no one, including me, can predict what you might become. Check out the Dr. Bob Patreon and become a junior researcher today. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-5019. Okay, that might be the first time out of me reacting to SCP videos in all the years I've been doing this, where I have to actively censor some of this stuff for my own safety and yours. Um, I tend to forget how vivid and much more vivid Dr. Bob's videos are when it comes to SCPs. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, but either way, that was an interesting SCP regardless. And he didn't even say what class it was. I'll have to look it up after this video. I'll probably put it up on screen right now. But either way, that SCP was definitely a different one than what I've seen in the past. And I've seen quite a bunch, which I should actually make a playlist, separate playlist for. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will be see you in the next reaction video. Bye.